We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship, and then Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. Jim's over here with you, and we are glad you are tuned in. Hope you're ready for a study from God's Word. We uh, don't have a contact information up here, but we uh, will give that to you. Anyway, my phone number is 276-340-2653. And we meet at 250 the Boulevard in Eden, North Carolina. If you want to assemble with the Church of Christ and study God's Word, we meet at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings for Bible study. Uh, as you, I think the commercial just ran. Actually, in 10 o'clock for worship. Then Thursday night's Bible study uh, is at 7 p.m. If you're in the Martinsville area, Sunday's at 9, 10, and 11. Uh, Wednesday's at 7. If you're in the Danville area, it's at uh, 10 and 11, and on Tuesday nights is when they have their Bible study at 7 p.m. So all kinds, of, all kinds of opportunities for you to study God's Word. We hope that you'll come out and do that very thing. This is a uh, Word from the Lord. The program is brought to you by the Church of Christ. And, we, uh, you know, we never take up money. We never ask for you for donations because we want you to realize that the gospel is free. And, uh, you know, we don't have begathons and telethons asking you for, to support our TV programs or send in for the love gifts or the donations, something like that. We don't do that because uh, this is uh, supported by members of the Church of Christ who lay by and store up on the first day of the week as God commanded, and thus we are able to do this and bring this to you uh, simply free of charge. So if you'd like any information that we have, DVDs, books, literature, anything like that, Bible studies, all free, all you have to do is ask us, 276-340-2653. When the phone numbers come up, uh, after a little while, uh, if you want to call in and uh, if you uh, want to give your name and address, if you'd like the Bible study, we'll be glad to take that. Uh, there's someone in the studio that can, that can uh, take that information for you. So we hope that you will certainly take advantage of that. I want to, tonight, I want to uh, 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 really continue addressing a subject that we started last week. It was uh, having to do with the homosexual marriage bans uh, supposedly being overturned and ruled against by the courts and and uh, this nature. And so we want to kind of continue addressing that and show you why we're doing this. Friends, one of the things that we are, are trying to get you to realize is when you are preaching the gospel as we're, as we're striving to do, then that's going to mean uh, opposing certain things. It's going to mean that you're going to find yourself contrary to some individuals, uh, even though you know it may not be popular, it may not be the thing that, uh, that, that makes you, uh, you know, the best uh, uh, friend to everyone. But nonetheless, our, our job, our goal is to stand for the truth and oppose that which is, is wrong. And so, we, you know, we find ourselves in a situation oftentimes where people uh, uh, think that we are, you know, I don't know, uh, 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 mean or cruel sometimes. But, you know what, friends, the bottom line is, it's, we, didn't, we didn't make the decision or we didn't define what is good and bad. All we're simply doing is trying to um, uh, expose error that is contrary to God's divine standard. Now, here's, a, here's an excerpt from uh, a call that I made to Into the Buzz. This is a, a couple weeks ago. This will be October the 6th is when I made this. I didn't have this available last week uh, for us to play. But I want you to listen to uh, uh, the com part of the conversation, and I think this is where uh, a lot of people don't understand why we do what we do. Just take a listen. I mean, in fairness, it, it looks like y'all are. I mean, y'all are against the trends. Well, <laughs> like that's something new. We're going to be against, we're against the trend all of a sudden. Right. I mean, the whole trend is going against what God says in so many other areas, so right. why would I compromise on this one? I got you. Uh, uh, all right, Thursday night, I'm sure we'll have more. Thursday night, 9 o'clock. Okay. Thanks, Charles. All right. All right, now, friends, here, here's where we find ourselves. In 2 Corinthians 10, in verse 5, Paul says, Casting down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringeth into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So 
what we're striving to do is we're trying to tear down the things that are contrary to the mind of God, which is revealed in His Word, and bring everybody's attention and mind focused on the things that are right. Now, sometimes that means opposing things that other people would say, you know, you need to let go. Look at this. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2, uh, verses one, we'll start in verse 1. Paul says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. That means when they like it and when they don't like it. That means when it's with the trend or when it's going against the trend. All right? Uh, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. Why? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. And so our job is to preach the, the truth of God's word regardless of whether people are readily accepting it or not. And so... Our, you know, our going against a trend is really, uh, it's really nothing new, and it's really ought to be the, the fact that, you know, it ought to be that uh, uh, people see, you know, we're, that we're the people that are going to be consistently against the trend if the trend is against God. Now, what if the trend was going in God's favor? And I actually think on this issue, and we'll, we've shown some of this uh, uh, last week, and we'll show some again uh, tonight if we get to this, uh, uh, get to it. But the trend on this particular issue is really not so much going against God. I know more people are accepting it, but it's more like they're just not opposing it. But the trend, the trend is not so much for this particular uh, issue, this, this homosexual marriage, as most people would think. And so, you know, the, 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 the gay marriage, the homosexual, the homosexual marriage, I say it's more hype and hypocrisy than anything. And so that's what we're going to look at. You know, so when people say, well, you're opposing, you're on the, you know, you're the odd man out, you're the, uh, uh, you know, going, going against the flow or, or whatever, you're opposing what most people are accepting. Well, that's nothing new. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, uh, Matthew chapter 7, and we're going to look at verse 13. Notice this. He said, enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So if I'm going with the majority, I'm going with the trend, if you will, uh, with the majority, then I'm probably going wrong. I'm probably going to go to hell. And so uh, it doesn't bother me to be going against the trend on this particular issue. But let's just, let's just bring it out for what we're really opposing. If we're going against the trend, is this what we're opposing? You know, I say, yeah, we're going against the trend. We're going against the trend of being intolerant. Now, usually, the, the, the term or the label intolerant is directed toward uh, us. When, when uh, uh, gospel preachers are preaching the truth, then we're labeled intolerant. But, you know, friends, really, the intolerant label doesn't really belong on us not the way most people say it. Am I intolerant of sin? Well, if, if intolerant means I'm going to oppose it, then yes, I am. But if it means tolerating your right to choose, well, hey, you can choose it if you want to. You know, everybody has free will, contrary to what, the, uh, what, what our, our Calvinist uh, neighbors say, you know, but, but everybody has free will, and so if you want to choose to go to hell, then that's your choice. But I'm not going to I'm not going to tolerate sin, and and just let let it come uh, 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 flooding over our society without opposing it. Now, if opposing means I'm intolerant, then, then so be it. But really, intolerant doesn't belong in our camp. That label doesn't belong in our camp. So I'm going against the trend of intolerance. I'm actually going against the trend of intolerance by showing that you know what we are not the ones that are trying to to stop people who are, uh, uh, you know, saying things that are different. I don't, if, you want, if you want to talk about how great homosexuality is, that's fine. That's your, your choice. But don't get mad at me if I say it's wrong and I say here's the moral standard that we're going to live to and this is, this is why you're wrong. But look at this. You want to talk about who's being intolerant. 
You know, this is the trend I'm trying to fight. This is the trend that's going against us. Look at this. The, the headline says, Houston subpoenas uh, pastors' sermons in fight over the bathroom bill. Now, the bathroom bill, you may recall, was a, was a bill that said transgendered people, if you felt like you were a woman, if you were really a man, but you felt like you were a woman, you could go into the women's bathroom. You know, if you were transgendered or you, you had this, you know, you just didn't really know where you were because you, you're, you're all mixed up and confused about your uh, sexual orientation, well, you just go in whatever bathroom you feel like. Now, that, that's the bill that, that these uh, uh, preachers were, were opposing. And so the Houston mayor, who is a lesbian, decides, you know what we're going to do is we're going to get all of the preachers who are opposed to this, we're going to get their sermons together. Here's, here's the article. It says, attorneys for several Houston pastors are challenging the city's attempts to subpoena their, their uh, sermons as part of a lawsuit against a recently passed transgender rights bill law, transgender right law, also known as the bathroom bill. The subpoenas asked the pastors to turn over all communications related to the Houston Equal Rights Ordinance, or they call it HERO. See how the, we'll, we'll make a name for it and so that everybody, so it sounds good. But uh, Houston Equal Rights Ordinance, which was approved by the city council in June. A citizen petition gathering effort to overturn the measure was thwarted after the city attorney said the number of valid signatures fell short. All right? Uh, uh, opponents of the ordinance, which forbids businesses open to the public from stopping individuals from using opposite-sex bathrooms if their gender identity doesn't match their biological sex, filed a lawsuit in August challenging the city attorney's ruling. All right? So the, the law is basically saying, you know what, if you have a business, you have a business, you have a cafe, you have a restaurant or some other business, and some guy comes in, he, he thinks, he, he feels like he's a female even though he's a male, you know, I'm just, I'm just a woman trapped in a man's body, he thinks. And so he's, I'm going to go to the women's bathroom. Well, you can't stop him according to this bill. All right, so people are opposed to that. They're opposed to that. They filed a lawsuit challenging the ruling. Well, the Alliance Defending Freedom... Senior legal counsel Eric Stanley said the pastors subject to the city subpoenas are not party to the lawsuit. Now notice this. City council members are supposed to be public servants, not big brother overlords who will tolerate no dissent or challenge. Now, now see what I'm talking about? Now who is really intolerant here? These people want to pass a bill that confuses the issue between man and women, you know. This woman feels like she's a man. He feels like, this man feels like she's a, he's, a, he's a woman. So, you know, we're just going to let them go to whatever bathroom they want to go to. Now, people say, well, no, we don't want that. Well, you need to hush. You need to be quiet or we'll sue you. Wait a minute. Who is intolerant here? You mean you can't tolerate someone saying no? That's not the right thing to do. That's not the just thing to do. That's not the moral thing to do. See, friends, the problem is when they start redefining words like marriage, really what they're trying to do, they're trying to eliminate the definitions that would make their lifestyle immoral or wicked. And so if you can't defeat it, through reasoning and through discussion and through, uh, and through truth, then what do you have to do? You have to squash it. You have to oppose those who would dissent or who would, who would uh, 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 challenge it. He says, in this case, they have embarked upon a witch hunt and we are asking the court to put a stop to it. Now, watch this. Of all the subpoenas posted on the ADF website, requires, one of the uh, subpoenas posted on AD, AFD, ADF website requires that the pastor and watch produce all speeches, presentations, or sermons related to Hero, the petition, Mayor uh, Anise Parker, homosexuality, or gender identity 
prepared by, delivered by, revised by, or approved by, you are in your possession. Now hear that? We want to see what you've been saying about it. What have you been saying about homosexuality? What have you been saying about gender identity? What have you been saying about the mayor? What have you been saying about this bill? What have you been saying about really, really much anything we don't like? What have you been, we want to see what you've been saying. Well, you know what? Kind of, I'm kind of uh, have mixed emotions on this. Number one, hey, if you want to hear what I have to say about it, get the DVD. It's free. See? I, you know, the, 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 uh, the mayor here, Anise Parker, she is, she is uh, living in a sin. She's living in, in uh, uh, a sinful life. Now, you, you want to hear, you want, my, you want my sermons on that? See that? So I wouldn't be afraid to turn over what I've said. But the, but the problem is they want, you to, they want all these preachers to turn over what they've said to use it against them as what? Well, hate speech, hate crime. You know what, friends? I never, I don't hear anything said about hate crime when it comes to Muslims. You know, this fellow up in Colorado who, who beheaded this office worker uh, actually actually got the, uh, uh, the go-ahead or actually was, uh, um, I guess what, uh, encouraged to, to act upon uh, this sort of thing from his mosque, going to this mosque. Do you hear any outcry over that? No, no. But you oppose homosexuality. Yeah, we're going to cut you off at the knees. Well, if, the, if, the, uh, uh, if you don't make a uh, public outcry against Islam, you know what, they'll cut you off at the, at the neck. But individuals don't want to hear any kind of dissent. And so now who's really being intolerant? Who's really being intolerant here? You know, that's what we talked about, the bakers, the people that, Say, you know what, we're not going to make these wedding cakes for, for homosexual weddings. Oh, you're intolerant. You are going to have to pay a fine. You are going to make a cake. You will make the cake. Friends, you know what, I just don't think that uh, you keep forcing people to do stuff against their will. I just don't think, you know, I, just, I don't know. I've always had a, there's no rule about, you know, it's an old cowboy rule. You know, you don't cuss the cook. What do I mean? You know, you just don't mess with the cook. Why? Because he's the one cooking your food. And if and if uh, uh, you get the wrong baker and you insist, no, you're going to bake me a cake for my homosexual wedding. You know what? I just don't know if I'd want to eat that cake. <laughs> I just don't know if I would trust eating that cake. You force someone to do something, you force someone to fix your food, and then you're going to eat it? I don't know. That's pretty foolish, really. Because there's no other bakers that can bake those cakes. See that? Now, I heard the North Carolina magistrate, I think it was in Wilkes County maybe, refused to issue a license for homosexuals. And the, the two homosexuals said, you know what, we're not going to force this. And, and the report I read said he was not going to face any uh, uh, legal action. You know, nothing was going to be done to him. But, you know, he'd probably lose his job. But I'm saying, friends, who's really intolerant here? Who's really intolerant? You on the word from the Lord? Yes, James. I'm, I'm sorry to catch you uh, in the middle of your conversation, but that's a wonderful, wonderful program you got going, and I, I really like the part you don't uh, mess with the cook. Uh, God bless <laughs> you, and keep up the good uh, word and information you're giving everybody. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah, I just, you know, I just know you make a lot of people mad, but I wouldn't mess with the cook. Now, uh, this... This subpoena that these uh, folks in Houston have issued for all these preachers actually said, all communications with members of your congregation regarding this bill, this hero bill, or the petition uh, are, were to be submitted to. So can you imagine that? You're talking to, you're talking to one of your, your church members, members of the church there you're talking about. It. Maybe you send a text about it like don't vote or vote, vote against this, whatever, and you want to hear that too? Friends, that sure strikes me as being very intolerant. Now, would I oppose that? Yeah, I'd oppose that. So who's really being intolerant here? They don't want to hear any dissent. They don't want to hear anything negative. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the Bible. It reminds me of this in Acts chapter uh, 6. 
Acts chapter 6 and verse 10. These folks are listening to Stephen. We'll look at verse 9. There arose certain of the synagogue, which called the synagogue of the Libertines and, and the Syri, uh, Cyrenians and Alexandrians and them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. Now what happened? And they were not able to resist the spirit, the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. So what did that do? They suborned men which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people. They stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes that came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses and said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against the holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. Well, they didn't hear him say Jesus is going to destroy this place. You know, they're, 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 they're making up these, they're making up lies. Look at this. And they all looked at him. And now look, at the, at the end of his speech, at the end of his speech in Acts chapter 7, how did they feel about it? How did they feel about what Stephen was saying? Well, if you come on down here and notice this, they, he called them stiff-necked and uncircumcised the heart and ears. And then uh, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. They gnashed on him with their teeth. And uh, verse uh, uh, 57 says, They cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their uh, clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down with a loud voice, uh, kneeled down, cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this into their charge. And when he said this, you know, he fell asleep. Well, they killed him. They killed him. Why? Well, they didn't, they didn't subpoena him. You know, they didn't sue him. They just took him out and killed him. Well, I guess we're a little more civilized than our intolerance. So am I going against trend? Yeah, I'm going against the trend of, of, of being intolerant. Well, let's look at this. Let's look at this. What about offensive? You know, we looked at some definitions last week. Intolerance is one of them. Uh, let's look at offensive. Uh, causing resentful displeasure, highly irritating, angering, or annoying. It means that which is unpleasant or disagreeable to the sense. Should be or disagreeable to this to the sense. Repugnant to the moral sense, good taste, or the like. Insulting. Now see, friends, we're told we're offensive. We're offensive. When you say something about God, you're offensive. When you, say some, when you say homosexuality is immoral, you're offensive. You're, you're resentful. You're highly irritating. Well, you know, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I need to get you some skin so soft. Someone around here sell Avon? I think they sell skin so soft. They get you some lotion. You all tender skin. Look, if you can't handle, if you want to do something and you want to put a, an idea or a position out on, in the... Uh, for it to be discussed, then hey, don't get upset if someone if someone critiques you or criticizes you. If you want to be public about it, then you ought to expect some criticism. Now, is it offensive? Well, you know what? I'm sure, I'm sure that the gospel is offensive to a lot of people because it, it highly irritates them. As a matter of fact, look at this. In Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, verse 9, Jesus said, In vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines and commandments of men. He said they violated God's, uh, verse 6, he said they, uh, I'm sorry, uh, verse uh, uh, 3, he said, Why do you transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? All right? So what were they doing? He said, Well, you, you said it not, the commandments of God. And, and he said, you're drawing nigh to God with your mouth and honor God with your lips, but the heart is far from me. They, they worship God in vain. Now notice what the reaction was. Notice what the action was. Verse 12, then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Now that word offended means to trip up. All right? What, what, no, 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 they were tripped up. They were, they were offended at this. And Jesus said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone to be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind leaders of the blind, they'll both fall in the ditch. Look, if you're going to stumble, 
at the truth and you're going to be offended by the truth and, and cause it to stumble, then that's on you. You know, I can't help that. So in that sense, yeah, hey, it may be offensive. But you know what offends me? What offends me is calling something moral and calling something gay that is really opposing what God says is right. Now notice this. The definition was repugnant to the moral sense. Repu repugnant to the moral sense. Now wait a minute. Aren't we talking about morality here? Didn't we just say that? Didn't we just say, friends, that the reason why people want to redefine marriage and they want to redefine lifestyle, they want to change the definition of things, is because they're trying to eliminate what is immoral and make it moral. See, we're trying to make the bad good, and that way everybody has to accept it. Right? That's what people say. Well, we just, you legalize it, and then it's okay. Well, friends, legalizing it in the court of the land does not make it okay. And that's what I said about homosexual marriage. You can call it homosexual marriage if you want to. That's not going to change what it really is. And the law of the land, the courts can say, well, that's unconstitutional to, to, call, to, uh, 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 to ban homosexual marriage. That doesn't change what God said. God originated marriage. So I'm, a, I'm on a trend. I'm fighting a trend against, against that which is offensive. Now let me show you how, how individuals want to make anybody who is so-called Christian, I'm using this term loosely, uh, they're the, always the offensive ones. You know that? Anybody speaking the truth? or anyone that's even remotely on the side of truth is always the offensive one. You know? They're always the offensive one. Here's the headline. God bless is very offensive to me. I'm a Viking with a Ph.D. Now, what, what was, what's going on here? Well, this young lady, her name is... Uh, uh, I will just read, read, read the article here. Uh, Trinity Western University graduate has filed a human rights complaint against a Norwegian wilderness company she says targeted her religious beliefs in a job rejection letter. In September, Bethany uh, Paquette, who is 23 years old and graduated from Trinity Western in the spring with a degree in biology, applied to uh, Amaruk Corporation for a position as a winter assistant guide intern. The next day, she received an email reply from the Wilderness Guide instructor, Olaf Amundsen. I think that we have a picture of o Olaf Amundsen here. Oh, no, that's the wrong Olaf there. Uh, here, here he is, Olaf Amundsen, you know. All right, now here's what, here's what Olaf said. Here's what Olaf said. Amundsen told Paquette that she did not meet the minimum requirements for the position outlined on the company's website, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. Hey, you, 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 uh, uh, you sign up, you make a, send out an application for, uh, for a job, and the guy writes back and says, you know what, you don't meet the requirements. You know, can't use you. Thanks for, thanks for considering Amaruk uh, Corporation, you know, work on those uh, <clears throat> requirements there, and you can, uh, you can join the team. And I looked at some of the requirements. I mean, that's pretty, you know, it was pretty tough. Like you had to swim 500 meters in 12 minutes or something like that. It's, I mean, it was some pretty, pretty intense uh, 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 requirements, I think. Like maybe you run a, a two and a half K in uh, 11 minutes or something like that. It, I mean, it's, you know, uh, so many push-ups in two minutes, you know, so many pull-ups, whatever. Uh, so, so, okay, those are the minimum requirements. But... Here's what, you know, but that's not what he said. You know, he didn't say thanks for thinking above us, you know, right back again, blah, blah, blah. No, here's what he said. He said, I do not understand the purpose of your application considering you do not meet the minimum requirements that are clearly outlined on our website. Additionally, now here's your, here it is. Additionally, considering you were involved with Trinity Western University, I should mention that, Unlike Trinity Western University, we embrace diversity and the right of people to sleep with or marry whoever they want, and this is reflected within some of our staff and management. Now, can you imagine applying for a job? And the guy writes back and says, well, you went to this university, 
And so we know you to be opposed to homosexuality, and we are all for that. Therefore, I don't know why you'd want to work for us. I can't imagine that, but he goes on. He, and so uh, she wrote back. She wrote him back, and she said, religious belief should, not have been, should, should have nothing to do with whether or not I met your company requirements. That's exactly right. He should have said you didn't meet the requirements. You know, uh, good luck finding a job, something. Thanks for, thanks for considering. Or, I mean, don't even write back. I mean, that's, that's kind of a rude way, but still. But then, but then to go make the comments that he made shows, shows who really the intolerant one is, right? Now, I see where you went to college, so now I'm, gonna, I'm going to really, uh, you know, jump on you with both feet. <clears throat> She said, I would like to inform you that in Canada, it's illegal for employers to discriminate against an individual based on their religious beliefs. Uh, I, I should say, uh, Aramuk Corporation is a Norwegian-based company, but it does have uh, uh, branches in uh, uh, British uh, Columbia, where, where this girl is right here. And so she signed off, she signed the letter, God bless. Now she said she did it just kind of a dig, <clears throat> but... I mean, given what he just said, surely he can take it. I mean, big, rugged Norwegian Viking, you know, he can take it. Surely he can take a little God bless at the end of the, of the letter. Well, the next day, this seemed to infuriate Mr. Olaf. This is nothing new, he wrote back the next day. You guys have a long history of intolerance. Talking about Christians. You have a long history of intolerance, he said. I am a Viking with a Ph.D. in Norse history, so your propaganda is lost on me. And he says, God bless is very offensive to me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's very offensive to you? You're a big, tough guy that can do, you know, 10 pull-ups and how many saying you can do how many push-ups and, you know, you can swim a cold, icy cold river in 15 minutes or whatever. And now you're offended? You're offended because she wrote God bless at the end of the letter? He says, I am a, I am a Viking with a Ph.D. God bless offensive to me and yet another sign of your attempts to impose your religious views on me. She didn't say anything about her religious views. He started it. And then, look at this, friends. This is the, this is the intolerance. I'm sorry, this is the tolerant, non-judgmental Viking with a Ph.D., Norse God worshiper. If I was to meet Jesus Christ, I'd, I'd actually F him. Really? French, can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? If I... Now, you're offended? And all this because she said, God bless? All this because she mentioned she went to Trinity Western University? And this is the, you know, this is the rugged, diverse, diverse type. But it doesn't, but it doesn't stop there. Remember, we're, de we're dealing with the, the tolerant, non-judgmental, non-offending, homosexual uh, lifestyle enablers and defenders. Later that day, Amarok's two co-chairmen sent a snarky email to Miss Paquette. Wait a minute. All right, now she's getting, now this is, this is three persons that work in this company are sending her an email. We believe that a man ending up with another man is probably the best thing that could happen to him, said Christopher Fragasi. Bornson and Dwayne Kenwin Bornson. So a man wind up with the best thing that could happen to him? All right. But we do not force these views onto other people. Well, yeah, of course you don't. You just write letter after letter after letter after letter. You know, imposing your wishes on someone. We do not force these views onto other people, and we are completely fine if a guy decides to go the emasculation route by marrying a B.C. woman. So getting married is emasculating. You know, takes away your manhood. 
but being a homosexual increases your manhood. Okay. I think they've been out in the Norwegian snow too long. All right? So here, here's, here's three people from this company that are writing this girl back simply because she applied for a job. She applied for a job, mentioned that she went to a, a university, which, by the way, the reason that they're so hard, uh, uh, firm against this, this university is because this university makes students and faculty sign a, 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 a covenant agreement that says they will not engage in uh, sex outside of marriage you know, while they're there. All right? Yeah, that's, that's real rigorous there, isn't it? And yet, this is, this is the, the uh, uh, offend, uh, offended people that are writing back. An hour later, now remember, this is the fourth person now that's written to her. The fourth person. An hour later, Miss Paquette received yet another snide note, this one from Amherst Human Resources boss. You are free to your own opinions and to live your life as you see fit, but you have no right to force your opinions onto others and control their innate behavior. Their innate behavior. Are you born that way? So here's the fourth person writing to this 23-year-old girl who mentioned that she went to a certain college and signed a letter, God bless. Four people have written back to her. And remember, now these are the non-judgmental, tolerant, undiscriminating, unoffensive promoters of homosexuality who are simply, as they said, expressing their opinion. But we don't force it on anybody else. But we don't like you stating your opinion or your belief, even remotely. See, just by saying God bless offends them. These big, tough, rugged Norwegian, Sweden Vikings. Really? That's, that's tough, isn't it? You see what we're talking about, friends? Now, who's really being offensive here? Who's really being non judgmental? Who is really being base and, immo and morally offensive? Now, why, why, why is it the case that why is it the case that we're labeled offensive? You know, well, friends, I really believe it's because truth hurts. And here are these people that know that this is not innate. Innate means that it's just it's human nature. Homosexuality is not something you're born with. It's not something you're born with. It's not something you're born with. All right. But yet, we've got to redefine it. We've got to change what is right or what is wrong to what's right. We've got to call good evil and evil bad, Isaiah 5, verse 20. And if you want to oppose it, then you're just, you're just judgmental. You're offensive. You're intolerant. Well, let's talk about judgmental. We talked about this, I think, some last time. Friends, ju judgmental means involving the use or exercise of judgment. If you use any kind of reasoning ability, you're judging something or someone. Or judgmental means tending to make moral judgment. There's that word moral again. There's that word moral again. Are we, are we really being judgmental? See, friends, if someone says, if someone says that something is okay, if I say, if I say homosexuality is sinful, yeah, I'm making a judgment. But someone who says homosexuality is okay, they're making a judgment too. They're making a moral judgment, saying it's okay. It always gets back to the question, why do you get to say it and I can't say it? Why do you get to do it and I don't get to do it? Do that. Now, so are we really going against the trend? Listen again. Listen again. Are we going against the, the trend because we're being judgmental? I mean, in fairness, it looks like y'all are—I mean, y'all are against the trends. Well, <laughs> like that sometimes.
something new. We're going to be against, we're against a trend all of a sudden. Right. I mean, the whole trend is going against what God says in so many other areas. So right. why would I compromise on this one? I got you. Uh, uh, all right. Thursday night, I'm sure we'll have more. Th- Thursday night, 9 o'clock. Okay. Thanks, Charles. All right. All right. So are we going to get, let's talk about this. What is the trend then? You know, the trend is really, is really uh, uh, condemning Christianity, condemning those who would oppose immorality. The trend is really making the right be the wrong. The trend is really showing no concern about what other people think, but squashing any dissent or opposition that would cause people any kind of, what, qualms about, you know, by saying, you know, if you make me feel bad about doing something bad, you, you give it, you're making me feel guilty about doing something immoral, so I, I, don't, I, want, I want you to hush. They're like those people in Acts 7, let's just stop my ears, you know. I don't want to hear it, I don't want to hear it. Well, what is the trend? And who's really going against the trend? Listen to this. Micah, Micah Robertson, your reaction to this? Well, you know, Charles, I was listening into uh, you know, the conversation you're having with James Oldfield, and you know, I'm in agreement with him. Uh, I, I believe that it actually was the case that Virginia had the same opportunity in voting. Uh, could be mistaken, but it seems like the research that I was doing for one of my shows, that the people of Virginia were given the opportunity to vote, and they voted against same-sex marriage. So I'm, you know, I'm kind of on the same playing field with, with James here. Well, the Attorney General is, is allowing people to get married right now. We're going to have our cameras at the courthouse today. Uh, close to 5 o'clock and see if anybody has uh, taken them up on it yet. Okay, so there's the trend. So, now, who's really going to get the trend? Uh, now, Michael was right. This is, this is what Virginia voted. In 2006, in November, a new constitutional amendment previously approved by the Virginia General Assembly limiting marriage to unions of one man and one woman was, was voted on by the people of Virginia. A majority of the voters, 57%, approved the amendment as opposed to 43% voting no. The amendment took effect in 2007. So the people said, this is what we want. We we don't want same-sex marriage recognized. We don't want same-sex couples recognized as marriage. This is what we want. But who's the trend? Well, you just heard Charles. Well, the Attorney General is saying it's okay. Wait, Wait a minute. The Attorney General... It's supposed to hold up the law. Now, the will of the people was, we're going we're to make these laws. We're, we're going to live by these laws. I thought everybody wanted majority rule. I thought the majority rule. You know, whatever, the majority rules when it gets, that, when it gets their way. In the, in the case that the minority don't get their way, then we have the courts overturning. Friends, there's a better way than majority rule, and there's a better way than courts overturning what the majority want. How about this? How about you use God's standard to determine what's right and wrong, and then let the majority agree to do that? Not, not majority vote on what's right and wrong, but agree that this is what we're going to do. See that? So, so who's really going to get the trend? I say... Uh, the person who's going against the trend are the are the, uh, uh, the attorney generals. Here's the North Carolina attorney general won't defend the state's gay marriage ban. The state, by a larger margin in Virginia, said we don't want same-sex marriages. And you know what? I'm not going to enforce that law. Can you imagine? Can you imagine uh, a, a police officer saying, "I'm not going to enforce that law." A moral law, a just law, and I'm not going to enforce it. You see? And so we're opposing things that are morally right. Now, who is really being offensive here? Who is really being judgmental? Who is really being intolerant? It's not the people who are standing for what's morally right. It's those who would oppose it. We showed you this last time. 30% or 30 states have voted to ban homosexual marriage in some way uh, by an average of 67.7%, so almost 70% have said 
we don't want same-sex marriages yet, yet the Supreme Court says, no, we're not going to weigh on it. We're not going to weigh in on it. You know what, friends? There's a lot of people that aren't weighing in on it. There's a lot of people that aren't weighing in on it. You know, the old saying is when, uh, you know, evil triumphs and good men do nothing. And I think that's exactly what we have with the Supreme Court, choosing not to weigh in on it. But you know what? It doesn't change what's, what's right. Matt, we're going to put the phone lines up. Sorry about that. It, it's not going to change what's right. All it's going to do, all it's going to do is just reinforce what's right if they would agree to do it. So whether the Supreme Court weighs in on it or not is, is of no uh, great consequence ultimately in the sense of changing what's right and what's wrong. All right? Now, here's, you know, here's where we are. Here's where we are. See, if you want to, if you want to make something bad be good, you have to relabel it. It's what they're doing with marriage. And thus now we're going to make it civil rights. Look at this. But, but this is a civil rights issue because everyone has come, they, they come to the United States, you know, say, you know, equal rights, e equal rights for everyone. So if, you know, the, the argument is, is that if one person could get married, you know, to a woman, why can't you get married to a man? You know, like a man to a man. I mean, in other words, if you're going to have equal protection for everyone. Well, well, like James was saying, this, you know, to say that this is a civil rights issue. Well, that's what it is. No, it, no, it's not. The civil rights issue is based upon a uh, something that people cannot help. I do not believe that a person is born a homosexual. Mm -hmm. That is a choice that they make. Science disagrees with you. What science? I mean, if you, you you look at science, science disagrees with that. Did you I hear mean, the cricket? And, and admittedly, it, it changed in the 90s when, when, when they reversed their the decision on it. But still, um, anyway. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> what science? Michael says, what science? Crickets. There is no science that shows that people are born homosexuals. They choose to be homosexual. See that? You're on the word from the Lord. Uh, good evening, James. I had an issue I heard today in relation to what you're talking about tonight. The uh, North Carolina Attorney General's office sent out a letter to all the magistrates throughout the state informing them that if they refused to perform homosexual marriages, they would immediately be fired from their position. So that puts all the magistrates in the state in the position of having to do these marriages or either lose their jobs. I thought that was interesting. Right. Yeah, I, I read the, uh, the, the, the magistrate down in, in uh, I think it's Wilkes County, uh, refused to do it, and they just, you know, the couple, the two men just found an, another magistrate to do it. Now, why is that a big deal? I mean, it's kind of like, the, you know, bake the cake. If you don't want to bake the cake, well, find someone else to do it. If, if it's that, you well, know. Well, all, that... all the magistrates work at the discretion of the judge, and he has the right to hire or fire them at his discretion, so... According to the Attorney General, if you refuse to perform a homosexual marriage, uh, you will be fired from your position. So how can how can the Attorney General do that if if it's at the judge's discretion? Right, but he's the head of the judges. He's the head. Ju he's the head of all okay. the judges in I'll North see. Carolina. The Attorney see. General. He's the chief lawmaker. I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. Well. But it puts those guys in a precarious position because it. It, uh, it forces them to go against their beliefs if they want to keep their position. And I don't think that's right, but that's the right. way it is, and that's the way our world is turning. So. Well, you know, I, I mean, I, I say if you're – but here's the thing. If, if individuals will make that stand, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to be fired, you know, for something that's right, that's what's going to make a difference. It's not going to make a difference if you, if you cave in and say, well, okay, I'm going to lose my job. You know, that, that's not going to make a difference. Giving in, compromising, I know. and so, uh, so in a way, you know, in a way, I'm, I'm kind of glad that the that the courts are overstepping their bounds and making all these decisions because I believe what that's going to do is make people fed up, you know, and then they'll say, you know, what we have had enough, and then you well, know, I'm then, a, then we'll really I'm a see. correctional instructor, and I do training for several different agencies in the state, and I teach uh, classes and. Most of the 
class is now focused on the rights of the LGBTI community and how we're supposed to respect those rights in the law enforcement community when we're dealing with these type of people on the streets. And it's been something that's put into our lesson plans in the last few years. And uh, if you put any of your own, if you interject any of your own thoughts into it, you're wrong. You're supposed to follow the lesson plan and what it says. And yeah. If I want to continue doing my instruction, I've got to do that also. Yeah. Oh. Well, you know, I find it interesting, you know, we're concerned about everybody else's rights except the rights of the majority. You know, that's what everybody's getting out to. The majority say they don't want it, but we have to cater to the rights of a an immoral minority is really what, I agree. what we're being I done. I agree wholeheartedly. So, all right. Well, hey, I pre- you get back to your appreciate Thank your call. Thank you so much. All right. All right. So, so, you know, is it really a civil rights issue? No, I don't think so. But here's the thing, friend. And we've talked about this with pedophilia. Pedophilia is coming right down the right, going to bring the door right next. They're coming in the door next, you know, because now they see, hey, if we're born this way, then hey, we, we get we get all the rights. Now I know uh, I've heard headline headliner show from, uh, you know, several months ago, that well, no, that would never happen. You know what they just said about homosexuality too. It will happen. It will happen if you don't make a stand now. Now, here's where it's coming. Here's where it's coming. I've got uh, just a few minutes left. Let me see if I can get through this material. Can you read this headline? It says, transgender surgery isn't the solution. Now, you know what the next issue is going to be? It's going to be transgender. Pedophiles and transgenders are, go- are going to walk through the door that we allow homosexuality to open. Here, here's an article. This was in the Wall Street Journal, and uh, here's what it says. It says, the Government Media Alliance... Advancing the transgender cause has gone into overdrive in recent weeks. On May 30th, the U.S. Department of of Health and Human Services Review Board ruled that Medicare, now watch it, Medicare can pay for the reassignment surgery. That's a sex change operation. Sought by the transgendered, those who say they don't identify with their biological sex. Now hear that? Medicare. So government insurance, that is taxpayer insurance, insurance that's paid by the taxpayer, can be used for these sex change operations. Well, you can't say no to it. You can't say no to it or you're, not, or you're judgmental. You're a judgmental, intolerant, offensive bigot. They can't say no to it. Earlier last month, Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel said that he was open to lifting a ban on transgender individuals serving in the military. Well, we're lifting the ban on everything else. Time Magazine, seeing the trend, ran a cover story for the June issue and called it the Transgender Tipping Point, America's Next Civil Rights Frontier. Now, you can't say you're born this way transgendered. You, you weren't born transgendered. You have to be changed. That is definitely a choice. But this man that's writing this, it's, he, his, his name is Dr. Uh, Mac Hugh. Uh, here's what he says. He says, uh, policymakers in the media are doing no favors either to the public or transgender by treating their confusions as a right in need of defending rather than a mental disorder that deserves understanding, treatment, and prevention. Here's the problem. They're saying this is a right rather than saying it is a mental disorder. Well, where do we go? Homosexuality was ruled a mental disorder. It was a problem. It was a mental problem. Oh, no, now we, we, we've got to change that. Well, that's what we're doing transgender too, all right? All right, we'll take a, take a phone call. You're on the word from the Lord. You're on the word from the Lord. Uh, yes, sir, James. I just want to say you're doing a good job up there tonight. You've got a good show. And I think they are headed for something bad. I think it's uh, I think it's been going bad for several years now. I think they're going to really headed to a new civil war or holy war. And I think that we ain't going to be prepared for it. I'm, I think it's really it's really coming. And people need to understand that the government is not going by what the Constitution says. Right. Well, and, 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 and the country's not going by what God's Constitution says. You know, that's where we got that's where we got messed up. All right. Well, thanks, thanks for your call. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. So here's coming. Now remember, 
it's, it's not a member. It wasn't a mental disorder. Now they've changed it. Well, same thing with transgender. Homosexuality what was a mental disorder, and they changed it. All right? I mean, Charles just said that. You know, Charles just said that. Uh, this intensely felt sense of being transgender constitutes a mental disorder in two aspects. Here's why. Two aspects why it's a mental disorder, this, this doctor says. He says, first, the idea of sex misalignment is simply mistaken. It does not correspond with physical reality. All right, you're just mistaken. You are a boy. You're not a girl. Or you're a girl. You're not a boy. Where'd you get that? It's got to be in your head. It's got to be in your head. The second is that it can lead to grim psychological outcomes. Well, friends, I want I want to get down here. All right, I want to come down to the uh, get down to this this statement here. Uh, a 2011 study at the Karolinski Institute of in Sweden produced the most illuminating results yet regarding the transgender evidence that should be given, give advocates pause. Here's what you need to think about, friends, on transgender. The long-term study, up to 30 years, followed 324 people who had sex reassignment surgery. The study revealed that beginning about 10 years after having surgery, the transgendered began to experience the increasing mental difficulties all right, after they had it, they began to uh, experience the difficulties. Most shockingly, their suicide mortality rate, uh, suicide mortality rose almost 20-fold, 20, 20 times higher above the comparable non-transgender population. This disturbing result has yet had no explanation but probably reflects the growing sense of isolation reported by the aging transgendered after surgery. Well, as they get older... See, the, these feelings start coming back about who they really are. High suicide rate certainly challenges the surgery prescription. Well, you want to have surgery? Well, when you get older, you're going to want to commit suicide. At the heart of the problem, here's the thing, at the heart of the problem is confusion over the nature of the transgender. Sex change is biologically impossible. People who undergo sex reassignment surgery do not change from men to women or vice versa. Rather, they become feminized men or masculinized women. Claiming that this is a civil rights matter and encouraging surgical intervention is in reality a collaborate with and promote a mental disorder. So if you say it's a civil rights, all you're doing is promoting mental disorders. That, 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 that's the key right there. All you're doing is making it worse. Now what's the problem? What's, what, what are we saying here? Well, what we're saying is, friends, when you get away from what God said, then you start causing more and more trouble. See that? When you start trying to justify things that are immoral, ungodly, and you start treating things that are problems as if they're rights, you're just adding to the mess, adding to the problem, adding fuel to the fire. Now, friends, we've got, we've got to stop calling sin okay. We've, stopped, we've got to stop whitewashing everything. We've got to get back to saying things that are immoral are immoral, and they can be changed. Homosexuality is not something you're born with. It's something you can change, and it's something we should not promote as okay and accept. We should reject it. Friends, I'm out of time. I'm out of time. I know that we've rushed through this, but I hope that, that we've helped you, and if we can help you in any way, we want to do that very thing. Always remember to ask for uh, what does the Bible say, and you get a word from the Lord. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Real Local, WGSR 47.1, in high definition. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? Are you tired of this commercial? So am I. Well, these commercials may be old and boring, but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m.
Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Thursday edition of Star News on WGSR 47.1 in Reidsville, North Carolina. I'm Art Childry. Glad to have you here on this 16th day of October 2014. We have 64 degrees at our studios in downtown Reidsville. A nice day. We did have some big puffy clouds, some of them dark clouds moving across the area this afternoon. No rain so far. We'll find out what the forecast will be for Friday 